Hey, what's happening gamers? Welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy for the Nintendo Switch. Brought to you by Capcom. Yay! Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and hit the bell to be notified when new episodes of Ace Attorney arrive in your inbox every day at 3 p.m. They arrive in our inbox? In theory. So, in our last episode, <laughs> uh, the Frenchman lost his French accent, and uh, we are heading to trial for Turnabout Recipe, or Recipe Turnabout, or yeah. no. The real reason the Frenchman cried was because of how Luke was doing his accent. Oh, snap. <laughs> January 7th, 9, 4, uh, 9 a.m. I'm here to help. <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, I see. I guess I should have expected this. I like that voice better. That is my voice. I know. That's with what a gold. It, yeah, that's fine. Nobody saw the other guy, huh? Nope. But he was there when I took the coffee over. Sir, Scout's honor. Maggie. Oh, sorry. Ah, Detective Gumshoe. Uh, are you doing all right? Uh, how, how are you feeling? Uh, as if you need to ask either question, sir. Uh, don't let him get you down, Maggie. Don't forget to eat well, okay? Aww, Roger! And you! Uh, yeah. Well, what is it? Hey, you better square this case away. Got it, pal? Maggie's innocent, you hear? He's gonna pummel you after. If you screw up, then I'll be doing some squaring away myself. Oh my god! <laughs> squaring away from paperwork for your arrest! Oh, I thought he was gonna uh, square you out, I, out I, in the parking lot. I, I think he's serious. Hey, detective! You're on our side for once, right? Yup. Or he's on Maggie's side. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll be able to help Maggie out, right? Really? Can you, sir? Uh, 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 uh of course! I, I've got the situation under control. <laughs> yeah, now you're on the burner. Uh, I'm gonna be the first witness on the stand today. Uh, if something I say doesn't mesh with the facts, make sure you point it out, alright? Um, sure. Isn't that what we always do? Okay. Uh, we're forming a united front today, pal. You got me? <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you how grateful I am, sir. I've always admired you so much, detective. I know I can count on you. Looks like it should all go pretty smoothly today, huh? I can only wish. Oh my well, gosh. Well, she's always greatly admired him. Interesting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh so my on goodness. January 7th, 10 a.m., courtroom number something. Oh my goodness. <sighs> Court is now in session for the trial of Maggie Bride. Yeah, he sounds good today. Was, the defense is ready, Your Honor. Except for it's Maggie Bird, but okay. Oh, dang it. You know what? That would be a cool... I think that's like a... like a. Mm. I feel like that's a Celtic name. Bride, Maggie Bride. Hmm, bitter. Sorry. Oh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Right? Ah, uh, yeah, what is it, Your Honor? Uh... What is... What's wrong? Nothing. It's just whenever I addressed you in the previous trial, your response was, "You talking to me?" It was a little well intimidating. <laughs> no, no, no. That that wasn't me. That was a phony Phoenix. I'm sorry. I see. So our trustworthy Phoenix Knight is back with us now, is he? Our trustworthy? So, Mr. Gano, your opening statement, please. Mr. Trite. Whether you're a fake or the real deal, we will find out soon enough through this trial today. But I can already tell you, I'm the real Phoenix Wright! <laughs> I wasn't questioning whether you're Phoenix Wright or not. I was questioning whether you had studied law or not. Oh, oh my sick God. burn! Whoa. That's what I intend to find out. Oh my gosh. There's no denying it. Behind that mask is a man who really hates me for some reason or another. I no. wonder why, Phoenix? Uh. As for uh, everyone is aware, the court has already given its verdict on this case once. Therefore, I won't stand for a relevant testimony during this retrial. Yes! I have a question. What is your question? The reason that guy hates Phoenix is because that was um, Mia's old boyfriend. Uh, Isn't it? Maybe. Nor will I, I stand was... for a simple repetition of the evidence presented in the last trial. He did act kind of weird when uh, the ghost was around, oh. so that could be. I thought that was a reason. 
I'm not planning on repeating anything that phony me said, trust me. Now then, Mr. Godot, please summon your first witness. Ba -ba -bum. And Wait, my voice is going to go It can't out. be Mia's old boyfriend, because Mia's old boyfriend died. Yes. Never mind. Okay, that can't be, then. Let's start with the formalities, shall we? Name and occupation. Uh, witness, state your name and for the court, you goof. Uh, oh, uh, sorry, sir. <laughs> Scallywood. Uh, the name's Police Detective Scruffy Beard. Uh, occupation, Detective Gumshoe. <laughs> <laughs> um... Other way around, detective. Uh, huh, oh, huh, sorry. <laughs> anyway, I'm the officer in charge of this case since yesterday. Woo! Since yesterday, why are you acting all weird? Uh, yeah, well, uh, I've got butterflies in my tummy for some reason. Anyway, the guy who was on the initial investigations uh, tied up with another case now. I hope Gumshoe's really got everything under control. For everyone's sake! And by everyone, you mean Maggie. Yeah. I see. So, Detective Gumshoe, would you outline for the court the basic facts of this case? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the victim's name was Glenn Elk. Uh, he was a professional programmer. Uh, he was the one on the payroll of the Blue Screens Incorporated, a local company. Uh, this is the victim's autopsy report. And he was from another planet. Yeah. Planet Vegeta. Uh, this court accepts this into evidence. Lens autopsy report. Fun. Uh, oh, and there were uh, floor plans of the restaurant. Okay. Uh, when the incident took place, the victim was sitting right here. Uh, the poison coffee was brought over to him by um by the waitress. The waitress being the accused. Yeah. Man. Uh, the victim died from poisoning almost immediately after he took a sip of the coffee. Uh, at the time of the incident, uh, there were two other people in the restaurant. Uh, Mr. Gene Armstrong, don't make me laugh, the owner of the chef, uh, the regular by the name of Victor Kudo, and the dead guy. Hmm. <laughs> it still seems to be a very straightforward case to me. Tresbien floor plans added to the court record. <laughs> it's making me thirsty. Come, detective. Take up this hammer. And nail the defendant's coffin shut with your own two hands. I don't want uh. to. Now then, Detective Gumshoe, please have your testimony at that day. Uh, yes, sir. All right, here we go. I know, poor Detective Gumshoe. He just found love. Well, actually, he hasn't even admitted his feelings yet, but... Yeah. Uh, when the incident took place, the victim was alone at his table. Uh, we understand that the guy, Glenn, was listening to a radio at the time. Uh, traces of poison were found in his coffee cup. And what we found was potassium cyanide. Yikes. That stuff really packs a punch. And, um, it looks like Miss, uh, Bird might have had, well, some kind of motive. Yeah, but anyone would have had a motive. <laughs> I would. Mm. But anyone in there or the surrounding area could have had a motive. Using the dark, aromic depths of coffee to conceal the poison. I don't think the poison had a smell. Classy lady. Yeah, if it didn't have a smell or taste, ah, taste it wouldn't need to be concealed. Uh, the facts of this case seem to be ironclad. Mr. Knight, I would ask you to begin with your cross-examination, but... Yes, your honor? Please, no intimidation tricks this time around. Is that understood? You terrified me last time. Oh my god. I already told you it wasn't me. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, that's funny. So we already know that his first statement is wrong, so... Yeah, but there's no real motive for Maggie herself to want money, though. True. Um, can I stop you there for just a minute? Uh, yeah. Uh, what is it? Uh, did I say something that contradicts the evidence? <laughs> Oh, he's so desperate for that to be true, he's practically crying out with laughter. Um, your testimony just now doesn't match the testimony given by Miss Bird. You can call her Bride, actually. It actual feels like Bride, better. it really does. She claims that there was another man at the victim's table. Uh, yeah, that's what she said, and I... Objection. What killer wouldn't say that when faced with a homicide conviction? <laughs> hey! Sadly, her testimony isn't supported by the owner of the other 
or the other customer. Isn't that right, Detective Gumshoe? Uh, yeah, it's true. There are two testimonies tie up on that. Uh, they both said there were no other guy at the table. That's because they couldn't see. Yeah, the partition. Hmm. What should I do? Should I press on this point? Yeah. Yeah, because there was a partition. Well, maybe the other witnesses just missed him. Perhaps their view of the victim's table was obscured in some way. Ha! Huh. That argument is as weak as the coffee at Tresbien, trite. Huh? I have here in my possession a ticket. Huh? A ticket? Looks more like a photo to me. Yes, a one-way ticket to Guiltyville. Population, the defendant. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. You can even see the partition oh, right there. Oh, and the partition is there, yep. but there's this no... This photograph is taken from near the entrance to the kitchen. Yeah, but the... This is my thing. The person only had to go in there... Poison the coffee when that guy was turning the other way for one second and leave. Mm -hmm. it, it, he could have just been in there for one second. Yeah, but notice how that partition right there is blocking the view from... It's only showing one chair. Yeah, he could have... He could have... He could be behind that partition right now. Mm -hmm. This is the... Ah, sorry, Judge, now. This is the scene as witnessed by the chef moments after the poisoning took place, correct? I think the court will agree that with such a clear view of the scene of the crime... How Mr. Trite could have... Anyone have overlooked a second person at the table. Ah! Irk! Uh -huh. It certainly seems to show the victim's table extremely clearly. Crime photo added to the court record. It was not... It did not show it clearly. It just... Uh, we understand that the guy Glenn was listening to radio at the time. Okay. He was listening to his radio, you say? Uh, yeah. He had a portable radio in his chest pocket. Maggie told us that too, didn't she? Something about how one of them had some sort of earpiece, Nick. What should I do? Should I press on this point a little harder or not? Yes! yes! And press what harder. was it that the victim was listening to on the radio, Detective Gumshoe? Huh? Oh, uh, how should I know? He died. Thanks a lot! We're now one step closer to the middle of nowhere! This isn't going very well, is it? Hmm, Detective, could you perhaps tell us about the poison and how it was used? Uh, traces of poison were found in his coffee cup. So traces of the poison were found in the coffee cup and nowhere else? Uh, not sure I get you, pal. Was the poison a liquid, or was it a powder? Uh, if I had to put it in lawman's terms, I'd say it was a powdery substance. Alright, so the poison could have been in anything that was on the table. Sugar, salt, pepper. Oh my gosh, you're right. Huh. It could have been the sugar. I know this guy so well now. Do you put salt and pepper in your coffee, Trite? Uh, the victim took his coffee black with no sugar. Oh. It seems that the poison could have only been in the coffee. What should I do? Should I press on this point? Yes! Press yeah. harder! Yes! Are you absolutely certain that the victim even drank any of his coffee? Huh? What do you mean? According to his file, the poison was found in the victim's coffee cup. Well, what proof is it that the victim ever drank any of it? The <laughs> autopsy? Uh... Uh, oh, hey, you're right! Objection. Oh, great. You'd think he would be hesitant to drink coffee, considering this case. I know. In case you were wondering, that last objection was for detective here. Uh, for me? Well. Oh, hey, you're right. You may be fooling the court, but I'm not falling for it. If you have the time to waste, you have the time to present that piece of evidence. Uh, that, that piece of evidence, sir? Yes, that piece. Uh, oh, poor detective. Um, <laughs> uh, what piece was it again? Really? This! Should I be grateful this coffee's only hot enough to give me a first degree burn? Oh my yeah! gosh! Phoenix, don't open your eyes. Oh, now I remember. Um, this is the, uh, uh, victim's coffee cup. Yes, the victim's cup. 
Take a good look at the rim. It's girly. Oh, yes, it's unmistakably. This is clearly a coffee stain on it. Conclusive proof that the victim did drink the poison coffee that was in his cup. <laughs> the victim gulped down the bitter death that the waitress brought to him. Like this! <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> uh, for the record, the only prints on the cup were the victims and the defendants. Well, Coffee cup added to the court record. Of course her prints are going to be on it. She had to bring it to her table. I know. Uh, upon further investigation of this cup, we found certain chemical substance. Gross. And uh, what we found was cyanide. Oh my gosh. Potassium cyanide. I've heard of that chemical before. Exactly how strong is this poison, Detective Gumshoe? Wow. Way too powerful. That is not a way I would want to go. Uh, it's, well, it's, the stuff's lethal. You eat too much in your history. No, you, actually, I'm not explaining this. No monetization issues. <laughs> Never mind. How, how much is too much, Nick? I want to know more about it. No, a lethal <laughs> dose is, Oh ah, my gosh. 0 0.2 grams. That's about enough to finish anyone off. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's so, like, that's, like, so little. Yeah. Uh, oh, 0. 0.2 grams? How much is that? This is fun! Uh, you know when you swab your ears for earwax? Uh, that's about that much. Whoa. Earwax, huh? Sounds like something Gumshoe got an abundance of. Hmm, so such a small quantity of poison could have been concealed anywhere. Hmm. And, um, it looks like Miss, uh, Bird might have had, well, some kind of motive. Yeah, but anyone would have a motive. Some kind of motive, you say? She wasn't in debt, though. Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah, but if you ask me, it's been blown way out of proportion. Oh, my gosh. You know what my golden rule is, detective. Chuck out a bad cup of coffee, you can always get another. Uh, hey, I don't get it. I, oh, I have a thing. I have a question, though. Hmm. I don't feel like she would have ever stolen a $500,000 ticket. Number one, she was a police officer mm -hmm. before. Number two, if that guy died and she took his ticket, that would have been traced, that ticket would trace it back to her winning mm -hmm. that money, and she would have been found out, and she's not stupid. She would know that she would be arrested for that. I get you. Okay. I'm saying we can always get another waitress, witness on the stand if you have to, uh, choke, chuck, 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 chuck you, you out, out if yeah. we have to chuck you out, man. Yeah. Well, so stick to the facts, detective. Now then, what was Miss Bird's motive? <sighs> Come on, Gumshoe! It sounds better as Bride. It does. Her name Maggie is Bride. Bride, Maggie Bird, yeah. Uh, she was... They said she wanted to steal a lottery ticket. I knew it! That's what we heard yesterday, too. It disappeared from the scene of the crime. And it wasn't just any lottery ticket. It was a winning ticket for half a million. Ooh. Whoa. Mr. Armstrong knew about the ticket, too, didn't he? But he stole the wrong one! Sacre bleu! Oh. Then it's possible Maggie stole the winning one? No. No, she didn't. What should I do? Should I press on this? You bet your butt! Yeah, of course, Phoenix. Wait a minute! The mere fact that the lottery ticket disappeared in no way implicates my client. Huh. I have here in my hand... The very ticket in question. That's the half a million dollar lottery ticket! So he stole it! Uh, one of the female police officers found it when she was, uh, conducting a search. Um... Uh, on the defendant. What? Naughty! He found it on Maggie? The guy who killed, uh, the dude probably stuck it inside of her, like, thing. I don't know how he planned on getting the lottery ticket later, though. Huh! Yeah. She's quite a lucky bird, our little waitress. You will submit that ticket as evidence to the court immediately! Hmm, I better keep an eye on that ticket, the way the judge's voice is quivering. Fingerprints! Maybe. Wait, what, the judge wants the $500,000? <clears throat> this ticket was presented to the court in the previous trial, too. But it feels heavier now somehow. Half a million dollars, you say? Hmm. <laughs> oh my god. It's just a scrap of paper. That matters. What matters is where it was found, Your Honor. And that's on Maggie's person, unfortunately. The judge is missing now. That's enough. <laughs> the facts of this case seem overwhelmingly clear to me. I'm gonna retire as a judge and use that ticket. 
The defendant had ample opportunity to commit the crime of which she is charged. Silence your cell phones, thank you. Furthermore, well, it seems beyond a reasonable doubt that she did indeed commit the crime. I like an old man who knows the score. As there is also the matter of half a million lottery ticket dollars. That alone provides a very credible motive. Mm. I mean, for that sum of money, even I might be tempted to bend the rules. <laughs> oh my god. I don't mind an old man who is weak to the siren call of money. Not good, Nick. The evidence against Maggie is starting to pile up fast. Yeah, I know. That's because the court had ruled guilty once already. <laughs> I say it's about time to wrap up this repeat performance. Gulp, 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 gulp. With one final decisive piece of evidence. He's got more evidence against Maggie? Come on! This is the apron of the delightful Miss Bird was wearing at the time. There's blood on it. Wow, that's not the cleanest apron I've seen. That stain looks like it can't be blood, can it? Huh. It seems the star of our play was a little flustered. Go, 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 go. Huh? And someone spilled coffee on herself. Coffee? That's not exactly the first thing that caught my eye. There's blood on there. Of course, the coffee stain isn't the most interesting thing about this apron. No, there's something else that stands out even more. Something else? I presume you mean... Of course, I'm referring to the pocket. What? The pocket? A search carried out right after the incident occurred. This uncovered this potassium cyanide. The very poison used by the killer was in her apron pocket. The bottle of poison in Maggie's pocket? Yeah, and Maggie's prints were the uh, only ones on it. Naughty again! Wow, Maggie, how did you let someone set you up? Oh, done! Oh, done! The court will accept these items into evidence. I'm starting to believe Maggie's guilty. I know, apron added to the court record. But why does she have blood all over the apron? I don't know. There's something still that's bothering me, Mr. Godot. Why have you not explained the blood stain to the court? Yeah! I know. Blood stain? What blood stain would that be? Don't play games, prosecutor. The blood-colored stain that's smeared all over the apron. Could it be ketchup? That's ridiculous. No one told me anything about a blood stain. It's right there. You don't need to be told. Just look at it. <laughs> well, detective, could this stain really be blood? Uh, no way, sir. Uh, that's... Uh, it's just ketchup, sir. Ketchup? Uh, she must have gotten some on her apron while taking someone their breakfast that day. Uh... You could have spoken up a little sooner, detective! I was getting more disturbed! I know! Pull a stud like that and I'll have you drink 17 cups of ketchup, witness! <laughs> Ugh! How could he make him do that? I thought everyone knew that, what it was, what it was already. Well, I think, yeah. I haven't seen anything yet to make me doubt the last ruling I made on this case. The motive, the opportunity, uh, and the supporting evidence, it's not looking good. They've all been clearly established. Hmm. Mm. Well, Trite, it seems you really are a phony after all. <laughs> oh, you really know how to drive a man nuts. Witness, please continue with your testimony. Mm. Uh, describe for the court the crime scene and the findings of your investigation there. Wow, this is a long testimony. All right, so we're doing another testimony. The investigation. Uh, the crime was reported at 2.25 p.m. by a kind of scary old man, sir. Uh, poor Maggie had passed out from shock. It must have been a real tough for her. But she's seen dead bodies before. I don't really yeah, get that. I don't know. Uh, the victim didn't have any identification on him either. Well, not really. She was studying to be a criminology person. Uh, but we figured out who he was pretty quick, and then the investigation went smoothly. Uh, when Maggie was searched, we found the lottery ticket and the bottle poison. And that was it. There was nothing else uh, missing from the crime scene. Hmm... You identified the victim and secured your prime suspect. Very good, Mr. Detective. Hmm. Hmm, smells delicious. 
Last chance to convince the court you're a real lawyer, trite. Huh? Don't count on it any more cross-examinations after this one, so let the fun begin. Wow. Okay. That guy is something else, I'll tell you what. Well, I guess we could press everything. I don't know. Did we already do that? Mm, we can press everything. I don't know. Starting with this. Uh, scary old man, Detective Gumshoe. Uh, there's an old man who's a regular at the restaurant where the incident happened. Ah, you're obviously talking about this clown. Wait, okay. he reported it? Okay. Officers were dispatched right after the report came in, but the old man still made a fuss. What took you so long? Then he hurled abuse at them and seeds. Oh, bird it seeds. It is that old man yeah. then. Seeds, eh? Huh. It was nothing. I caught each one with my teeth. Okay. I guess not even the mighty Godot can avoid being attacked by that guy. The old man was the only other customer in the place at that time. Didn't mean to do that. Uh... He took his time finding a payphone, apparently, so he was late reporting the crime. Yeah, it's because he didn't want to turn in the waitress. Poor Maggie had passed out from shock. Okay, how long was the defendant unconscious for? Uh, the officers got to the crime scene around 2.40. Uh, Maggie was still out cold in the kitchen at that time. Uh, it took another ten minutes or so before she came to. Uh, I would have liked to have been on the scene myself. I bet you would have liked to have carried out the search, too, along with carried her away. I would have loved to see Maggie asleep like that, all pretty and peaceful. <laughs> okay. You're a professional detective, Gumshoe, not a professional bird watcher. Yeah, her name's Bird. Yeah, I know it is. Uh, save the romantics for your own time, detective. Her name would sound better if it was Bride. All we need to know about this is the investigation. Uh, whoops. Ha, I guess I'm pretty red right now, aren't I? <laughs> uh, the victim didn't have any identification on him. Hold it. Um, he didn't have any? Are you saying that it was stolen then? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, the victim didn't have a driver's license or even a credit card on him, pal. Maybe he's from the future. <laughs> All he had was 58 cents in his wallet. He really needed that. 58 stuff. cents? Yeah, I can't believe I found someone with less in their wallet than me! <laughs> the victim sounds like he was a thoroughly miserable young man. He was about to be. Or some kind of outlaw. Why not give him a bit of an edge? I think I'm onto something here. Wait, we're making up stories about him now? Uh, but we figured out that he was uh, who he was pretty quick. Wait a sec! Huh? Did, did I say something dumb again? Let me paraphrase uh, what you just testified to this court. The victim didn't have any form of ID on him. That's basically what you said, yes? Uh, yeah, basically. Okay. In that case, how were you able to identify the victim so quickly? Uh, oh, uh, that. He's so let down, he's got the whole sagging shoulders and puppy eyes thing going. Aww. Uh, there was a prescription bag on the victim's table along with a lottery ticket. It seems Mr. Glenn visited the doctor before he went to Tresbiet. Mm. Uh, we got the victim's name from the medical records of the doc who prescribed the meds. Hmm, that's a relief enough, source for the court. Uh, what should I do? Should I leave this alone? Well, um, why don't we ask about the prescription bag? Good idea. So, what sort of medicine was in the bag? Uh, well, uh, actually, the bag was found there was empty. Huh? Yeah, completely empty. <laughs> it was completely empty, eh? What? Victim's prescription bag, empty. Huh. You're entering an empty paper bag as evidence? Desperate, are you, Trite? Mm -hmm. It could be important. Now, what happened with the investigation after that, detective? I miss when there was a female prosecutor. Uh, Sorry. When Maggie was searched, we found the lottery ticket. I know, you're just talking to yourself. <laughs> yeah, I mostly am. Well, the defendant had been passed out for a while, correct? My question is, how did Maggie get from passing out at the table all the way back to the kitchen? I know. Did she teleport? Who dragged her there? Yeah. In that case, isn't it possible someone planted evidence in Maggie's pocket? That's true. Hey, yeah! You've nailed it, pal! Hmm. It happened to me all the time. Uh, we had a department party the other day, and when I got home, 
I was wearing the boss's shoes! Oh my gosh. Keep up this crazy testimony, detective, and those shoes will end up down your throat. How would that even you can't be do possible? that. You can't threaten someone on the witness stand. I know. Sorry. So trite. Someone planted the evidence in Maggie's pocket. I actually like your uh, attorney guy. Good though. That's pretty bold statement. Care to back it up with some evidence? Um. Well, I'd love to if I had any. <laughs> it appears you have no evidence to support your theory, Mr. Knight. Oops. Continue with your testimony, witness. And that was it. There was nothing else. Um, so half a million dollar lottery ticket and the bottle of poison were accounted for. Uh, yeah. Interesting. It's true that those two items are accounted for, but wasn't there another lottery ticket that was stolen that day? Oh, yeah. Uh, the one the restaurant owner took. Huh, he won a whole dollar with it. What a lucky guy, huh? And they're just going to let him get away with it. It was just one dollar, detective. Yeah, but it's still stealing, actually. I know. I guess no one cares when it's that little, except for Gumshoe. If I don't find a hole in this testimony, the judge is going to hand down his verdict. Yeah, but if you steal a dollar from your job, you can get fired. Mm. Even if it's a dollar. Gumshoe isn't giving us anything to work with. And we can't find any contradictions if he doesn't give us something! Yeah, that's true. But Maggie and Gumshoe are like dumb and dumber. Oh my gosh. Wow. Our only hope is that they were so dumb they missed something obvious. Come on, Gumshoe! Be the dumbest that you've ever been! <laughs> what now? <laughs> Alright, so... Uh, there's something about um, how they were able to identify who he was. Yeah. Not this one. We figured out who he was pretty quick. There has to be something here. Um, I don't know. Alright, let's, um... Figured out pretty quick and then the investigation went smoothly. Wait a sec. Oh, did I say something dumb again? Let me paraphrase what you just testified to this court. The victim didn't have any form of ID on him. That's basically what you said. Uh, yeah, I'm getting deja vu, pal. In that case... Uh... Oh, yeah. We already said... We already helped... Hel I know, but there them. there was another option. Okay. Uh, there was a prescription bag. Remember? It seems Glenn visited his doctor before he went to Tresbiet. Oh, uh, yeah, but, uh... We're just trying to get to the other thing. That's a reliable enough source for the court. Oh, you're right. Hmm. Okay, well, what about, like, when they said there was nothing else at the crime scene? I think we can, like, probably present something there, because I think there were other things at the crime scene. There were other tickets, there was a prescription bag, there was, like, a bunch of stuff at the crime scene. Oh, we'll try the prescription bag. I mean, if any, you know, if not, we can always try the lottery ticket. Okay, well, we'll try that then. Detective Gumshoe, I think I should point out something to you. There's just one small contradiction in your testimony. Huh? Oh, finally! <laughs> ah, I'm getting all anxious just waiting, so hurry up, will ya? <laughs> um, right. You testified nothing else was missing from the crime scene. However, the prescription bag you mentioned was empty. Oh, we said nothing was missing. Did the huh? officers recover the medicine from the scene of the crime later? Uh, no, they didn't. The victim was given a prescription right before going to Tresbien. Where, then, did the medicine disappear to? Uh, y you are too cool, pal! What? <laughs> he wants you to find something wrong. Indeed! Due consideration wasn't given to the victim's prescription in the previous trial. Witness, why do you always overlook such vital pieces of evidence? I, uh, <laughs> I guess that's the most careless thing I've done so far, huh? The victim was killed by poison, and the victim's medicine was mysteriously gone. The victim's own prescription could have been the lethal poison itself. What? What? I'm so confused what you're Hold talking on. about. Well, Mr. Godot, what do you have to say to that? Did the doctor prescribed huh. poison to him? That's all. What? Read for the court the name of the clinic on the prescription bag, if you will. What's the clinic's name got to do with anything? 
New Ear Clinic. Ultralingological oh. oh. Just what kind of illness was the victim suffering from, Mr. Godot? <laughs> Hardly an illness, Your Honor. More like a bitter war wound, you could say. A war wound? The day before the incident, Mr. Elg found himself in a fight. Okay. He took a blow to the side of the head and ruptured his eardrum. Hey, you still have to take penicillin for that. Antibiotics. He ruptured his eardrum? Then what on earth was the prescription he was given? It was a cream that was to be applied topically inside his ear canal, not to be ingested. Yeah, but what if you accidentally ingested it? Well, it doesn't have cyanide in it. Oh, okay. It would make you very sick. It's mentioned in the autopsy report if you read the fine print, trite. They found traces of the medication in the victim's left ear. Yes, here it is, in a very, very fine print. It seems Mr. L correctly applied some of his medication while he was at Tres Biet. Then where did the rest go? Therefore, it would be absurd to believe that he would have eaten his medication. Sorry, that made but me chuckle. But you could have made it into... <laughs> you could have made it into something else using, like, a stove or something. Maybe. It seems that his medication is sort of, uh, irrelevant to the case after all. Man, that's yes. hard to say in a Scottish accent. No! Nick! If you don't think of something quick, it'll all be over! She's right, but I can't get away with an old, weak objection. What should I do? Mm, mm. Push the medication issue! I guess. I Only moments ago, Mr. Godot made the following statement. It seems Mr. L correctly applied some of his medication while he was at Tresbiet. If that's the case, then why was the medication not found at the scene of the crime? Yeah! Huh. Well, the medication in question was for topical use inside the ear canal. Okay. That doesn't change the fact that it could not be found at the scene of the crime. Mm -hmm. however, however insignificant it may seem, it's a lawyer's duty to pursue the truth. Objection. You know as well as I do that the medication is irrelevant. It hardly seems likely that a prescription drug would contain potassium cyanide. Mm. It hardly seems likely that the coffee the waitress served would contain it either. But it did. The possibility is undeniable. No. Oh. Yeah. That's enough, children. Mr. Godot, is the detective the only witness of the prosecution that wishes to call to the stand? Uh. Mr. Godot. Oh. Um, I, uh, I've got my own witness I'd like to call, sir. <laughs> it's the old man who was there in the restaurant on the day of the murder. Victor Kudo, the pigeon hater. Very well. The matter of the disappearing medication seems more, little more than trivial at best. However, it wasn't explored at all in the previous trial. And that is something that bothers me. Yay! Good job, Nick! The court will adjourn for a ten-minute recess, after which we will hear the prosecution's next witness. Huh. I suppose this means I'll just have to finish you off in my last six cups. Court is adjourned for a recess. Let's go play, everyone. Oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Well, wow, Luke, that gave your voice a workout. Yeah, it always does. Whoa, that was close! Tell me about it. I nearly died in there. That's my line, sir. No, it's my line! I think I really did die a little bit. I think Maggie wins. <laughs> Maggie wins, yeah. <laughs> Looks like we all nearly died in there. I can't believe Detective Gumshoe, how can he betray us like this? Huh? He said he'd help me, but he totally set me up! I don't think he meant to do that, Maggie. He was backed into a corner. I mean, the guy's got to do his job, right? It's okay. I know about lies and betrayal. I've had them all my whole life. But it really hurt this time. It felt like someone punched me hard in the stomach. I hate that guy. I don't want to ever see him ever again. Oh, no. Poor Gumshoe. So the next witness is going to be that old guy from the park, right? 
Yeah, Mr. Kudo, lover of waitress outfits and projectile seats. I bet he's gonna be really stubborn. I mean, he's pretty set in his ways, you know? Yeah, he's a big old grouch. Are you gonna be able to handle him, Nick? Yeah, I can take whatever he throws at me, even those never-ending bird seeds. Oh my goodness. Mm. January 7th, 11.15 a.m., District Courtroom, courtroom number four. Whoa. Court will reconvene for the trial of Maggie Bird. But it'll reconvene tomorrow. So anyway, Aww. guys and gals, that does it for today's episode. So uh, Maggie is no longer liking Gumshoe. Gumshoe is head over heels, and Maggie hates him. I feel so bad for the guy. Yep. Mm -hmm. But join us tomorrow as we take on Victor's testimony and see what he witnessed, what he really witnessed, now that Phoenix Wright is the real phoenix right yeah the real deal so check out some other cool videos today at six along with a live stream at eight or nine here on k wings let's plays with new videos every single day if you haven't turned on all notifications for this channel make sure you do so so you never miss an episode or if that's too difficult for you you can always become a member and join our channel have a great rest of your day guys and gals we'll see you with more content later today god bless and happy gaming see ya. <laughs>